Hey guys, we're back in Fort Mill, South Carolina at Pro Dino. This time we've got our 2022 Bronco Raptor on the dyno. We'll be getting some baseline runs and then we're going to be installing a Whipple intercooler. So we're back here at Pro Dino in Fort Mill, South Carolina. And today we're gonna to do an oil change on our Bronco Raptor. And since you have to take half the truck apart anyways to do an oil change, we figured now's a good time to go ahead and install this Whipple intercooler. I mean, while you're in there, you might as well. Seems like a good idea. 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. There we go. Throw that shit away. Poor fella. You don't need any of that. All right, so I know this is what you guys have been waiting to see. This is our factory Bronco Raptor intercooler. This is the prototype Whipple intercooler. So this is may not be the exact one that you end up getting when you order this kit. We're test fitting this, so if changes have to be made, Whipple will do that. But uh, we wanted to give you guys an early look, so here it is. The factory one, of course, just like all of Ford's intercoolers, you've got plastic in tanks all crimped together here. That's a failure issue at some point down the road. With the Whipple one, you've got cast aluminum tanks, fully welded around. Of course, you've got more bars in it, more bars plates going through. So you've got more cooling capacity, but the big difference is right here. Once you look at the section width of these two, the core thickness is easily 50% more on the Whipple. It's quite a bit bigger on the back side. You can really see the difference here. So this thing is not only going to be less restrictive, meaning you're going to have less boost lost going across this core. You're also going to be cooling better. So air will be moving easier from one side to the other. You've got a thicker core allowing more time in contact with all the fins on the inside for the air coming through to cool the charge air. So this is just an all around better option. And you guys saw in our last videos where we upped the boost with this JB4 module over here, we basically reached a limit of what this factory intercooler could handle on uh, map three with that thing. So hopefully this will cool down enough and allow us to take advantage of that added boost we're throwing in. So we're going to deviate from the instructions that Whipple sent us uh, because these are for the standard Bronco and of course, you know, with the Raptors, there's a few little differences, especially on the front bumper. But another thing that we're doing, this is just specific to our particular trim package, the way I ordered this Raptor, is uh, Whipple sent you this bracket to mount your front mounted radar for like your lane keeping and all that kind of stuff and cruise control. Well, this is the box that came off the front of it and it's empty if we didn't get that option. So the way this bracket's made, we can just unscrew this piece here and get even more airflow into the intercooler. One of the cool things also about this bracket is there's a, uh, a position here at the top to mount the controller for the louvers that come with the factory intercooler. So you have these little louvers that can close off depending on the speed and demand of airflow going through the engine. It does help with fuel mileage somewhat, but uh, it's not gonna fit with that much thicker core. So what you do is basically disassemble this thing, get the little actuator out, and it'll mount on top of that new bracket. You can plug it in and uh, it'll think it's doing some stuff, but it won't be doing anything, but that'll keep you from throwing a check engine light or anything else. So got that little mount for it right here on the top. So it's just one of those things, first time anybody's done one of these installs, 
Whipple themselves haven't even installed this uh, particular kit on a Raptor, so we figure it out as we go, don't we, Paul? Right. That's why you come to Pro Dino. So here it is with the shutters on the back. This sort of just directs airflow when the electric fans are on. It will pull air through the intercooler core. Just creates a little seal there at the bottom of the radiator. So it's kind of optional whether you want to run this or not. Uh, just the way that we drive it, you know, and tow and things like that, I thought it'd just be a better idea to have it than to not have it. But if you just want wide open performance, you could probably just go ahead and leave this off. Not really necessary. So like I mentioned earlier, we pulled out the little actuator uh, from the active grill shutters that go in front of the intercooler here. We're not going to need those. Whipple gives you two little zip ties, zip tied up here out of the way. So that's nice. And be able to slap it up in here and plug it in. Fits in there nicely, doesn't it? And the other thing you can see, we left this bracket out here. That way, get more air directed directly into the intercooler core. And since we got the little actuator out of here, don't really need this anymore, so we can just go ahead and take care of that. Oh, I got a hand grip built in on this side. Got a tow hook. So probably I'll just go ahead and plug this up. Alright. Put your five million push pins back in. Yes, yeah, that one. It's slaughtered in the front. There's the oil train right here. The filter's on top, right? Yeah. And it wasn't lying. We actually are doing an oil change. Would it have killed you to move it like right there? Yeah. I mean, it's not as much of a chassis lubrication system as I thought it was going to be, though. It will be okay. I don't get that wire right there. From so that wasn't too bad, but we have a better method we'll use next time. There we go. Today's flavor of oil, Kirkland 5W30. There's a very good reason why we buy our oil from Costco. It's cheaper. I wanted to give you guys one last look at this whip winter cooler before we start buttoning everything up. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks really good here. And then leaving the uh, little box off the front, I think that's the right move. No need to put this little plastic cover there. I think it looks a lot better and we'll definitely get more airflow into the inner cooker core. But yeah, I just like this thing with the cast aluminum tanks. Fits up there nicely. Pretty good install. So we're gonna go ahead and slap the plates back up in place and then throw it on the dyno. I don't know what's going on. People keep posting all these memes about it's pumpkin spice season and seeing Halloween decorations everywhere. It's 96 degrees in South Carolina. It's not fall, it's still summer.
So a chassis dyno really isn't the best test for an intercooler. You don't have enough air moving over it and it's kind of a short pull, short duration. You're only talking about six seconds. Now a grade like this, this is a real test, especially when you're towing something like we are, which is right at about the limit of the weight that a Bronco Raptor is supposed to be towing. This is our 19 foot no boundaries camper. It's right now it's 62 degrees outside. I'm gonna downshift to seventh to go up this grade. About a 70 mile an hour limit, but probably going to end up doing about 60 up it. As you can see right now, we're running around nine, eight, nine, ten pounds of boost. Cylinder head tips 195. But let's go over and take a look at what the air intake temps are doing. Right now, IET1, which is inlet air temperature, is 77 degrees. Air charge temperature, IET2, which is after the intercooler, is running 80 degrees. And as we continue to climb this grade, the temperatures are not climbing that quickly on this intercooler. So the whip intercooler is working great. We're doing seven, eight, six PSI of boost now. Give it a little bit more, run it up to nine, and you can see 77 degree air going in the uh, air box, 84 coming out of the intercooler and going into the throttle body. So the thing is really effective and probably gonna have to slow down because there's a truck in front of us now. But this is the kind of real world testing that can show off how well a part like that works. You're never gonna see this kind of stuff on a dyno and these kind of numbers, so. Can't complain with the performance at all. It's doing really, really well. We topped out at uh, cylinder head temps at 206. Bronco Raptor does great towing this trailer. Um, no complaints there. And with the Whipple intercooler, it's even better. All right, guys, that's pretty much gonna do it for our Whipple intercooler install and test on our Bronco Raptor. I have to say that I'm very happy with the way it went. The install was very simple and you cannot argue with the performance. And on top of that, I think it looks great. I really like having the front open here. Looks much better than stock. So if you're interested in keeping up with this build and seeing what we have next for it, go ahead and subscribe. You know, do all that YouTube stuff and head over to svtperformance.com. That's where we have all the coverage on our Bronco Raptor and all the latest news, reviews, and information on your favorite Ford-powered vehicles.